assalamu alaikum my dear students i welcome you for today's topic of discussion in surgery this is about the operation of cholecystectomy the removal of gall bladder for any disease of gall bladder the preparation for the operation is very important in the house surgeon who is in charge of a patient who is scheduled for cholecystectomy in history must look for any coagulopathy in the patient the patient taking any anticoagulants are very important the history of anticoagulation for example aspirin or warfarin similarly any patient who is taking contraceptive hormones they cause hypercoagulable stages uh, states and lead to deep vein thrombosis etc so the history of contraceptive hormones must also be taken so that you know patient is not taking any hormones previous abdominal surgery history is also similarly very important in planning the surgery in clinical examination of these patients must the following points are very important we must look for any evidence of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease you may need an x ray of the chest an evidence of ischemic heart disease you may need an ecg the patient presence of jaundice you must very carefully examine for abdominal scars palpable masses in the abdomen any tenderness over the abdomen and obesity special record has to be made of these points on examination pre medication is the responsibility of anesthetist prophylaxis against thromboembolism must be in must include subcutaneous heparin use the thromboembolic deterrents the stockings pneumatic leggings a special caution in patients who are on warfarin therapy that they should stop for warfarin before surgery at least a week before and must continue after four days or five days after the surgery <clears throat> the urinary catheters and nasogastric tubes should be in place and the patient's informed consent must be taken before the surgery or anesthesia so <clears throat> the checklist for the house surgeon preparing a patient for cholecystectomy includes a full blood count renal profile and liver function test prothrombin time chest x-ray and ecg antibiotic prophylaxis deep vein thrombosis prophylaxis and informed consent then there are two types of cholecystectomy the open cholecystectomy and the more recent laparoscopic cholecystectomy the steps are essentially similar the position of the patient is the patient is placed on the cassette changer table top so that the tip of the ninth costal cartilage is opposite the center of the grid foam wedges are placed under the lower left ribs and the left buttock so that the common bile duct will not be superimposed on the lumbar spine on cholangiogram the plane of the grid remains at right angles to the x-ray beam in order to give clear definition a foam pillow is inserted under the ankles to raise the calves of the table the most commonly used incision is the cocker the right cost subcostal incision the other incisions that can be used are upper right paramedian or mid nine incision the surgeon stands on the right side of the table for the paramedian and cocker incision but on the left for the midline incision personal preference is the main reason for selection but in the obese patient or where there is a wide costal organ or angle the cocker incision is preferred each incision gives good exposure and can be extended if, if required the cocker incision can be turned superiorly to the xiphoid process or continued into the left subcostal region <coughs> the right cocker incision the incision is placed 4 cm below the below and parallel to the costal margin and extends from the epigastrium with the midline to the 8th or 9th costal margin cartilage 
the anterior sheath of, of the rectus sheath is open in the line of the incision until both edges of the muscle which uh, can then be stretched over two fingers and gradually divided. Before the vision, any vessels are caught with some muscle as they tend to retract deep to the muscle. The peritoneum is open between the forceps and if this fails to give adequate exposure, the muscle layers are divided laterally, taking care to avoid damaging the ninth intercostal nerve. <coughs> The exposure is the right hand can be introduced now over the right lobe of the liver to allow entry of air into the subdiaphragmatic area, therefore permitting the liver to descend and making visualization easier. The anatomy of the biliary tree is assessed by carefully dividing the peritoneum on the anterior aspect of the cystic duct and continuing into, into the interior layer of the lesser momentum, overlying the common bile duct. The diameter of the cystic duct and the common bile duct are noted, and by blunt dissection with the pledget, a triangle bounded by the cystic duct, common bile duct, and the porta hepatis is exposed. The cystic artery <coughs> is seen in this triangle in most patients before the surgeon proceeds. The, he must have a clear picture of the arrangement of the duct system and the arterial supply. <coughs> Failure to appreciate variations may result in division of the common bile duct, hepatic artery or right hepatic artery. The index finger of the left hand is inserted into the foramen of Winslow with the thumb lying anterior to the lesser momentum. The peritoneal reflection between the duodenum pancreas and inferior vena cava is broken by a downward movement allowing the index finger to lie posterior to the second part of the duodenum and head of the pancreas. The thumb slides down anterior to the pancreas, allowing bidigital examination. The pancreas is normally lobular and firm in texture, but it may be thickened by the inflammation or stony heart because of a tumor. The artery should be ligated and divided first because the division of the duct before the artery can result in excessive tension on the later, which can then tear and retract into the porta hepatis. However, this is a rule which at times has to be broken, but the danger must be recognized. Ligation of the cystic art duct and artery is very important step and it has to, have, has to be done very carefully. The forceps on the gallbladder are held in the left hand to produce tension and the cystic artery is cleared of the soft tissue with the pledget held in the cholecystectomy forceps. The artery is followed to the gallbladder and ligated close to the edge of the gallbladder wall. A cholecystectomy forceps is placed on the artery at least two millimeter away from the ligature and the vessel divided. Seal or polyglycolic acid suture with at least three throws should be used to achieve a firm holding knot. Now coming to the cystic duct, it's cleared in a similar manner to expose the junction with the common bile duct. The polyglycolic acid ligature is used to tie the duct close to the wall of the common duct and the cholecystectomy forceps is placed on the duct near to the gallbladder. The duct is divided, leaving a stump of at least two millimeter to ensure a safe ligature. <coughs> a seric or non-absorbable ligature should not be used because this can erode into the lumen and form the nidus for a stone. <coughs> Removal of the gallbladder, the two cholecystectomy forceps are held now in the palm of the left hand to put tension on the tissue between the gallbladder and the liver bed. The index finger of the right hand is inserted between the neck of the gallbladder and the gallbladder bed, bed, bed on the, in the liver and used to separate them very gently be, with blind, blind dissection. This method reveals tight strands which should be caught in forceps before division because they usually contain additional vessels. The edges of the mesentery will become apparent and are 
cut with scissors or a knife. Extra tension without such division may cause stripping of this capsule of the liver and provide some bleeding. The gallbladder bed. After removal of the gallbladder, the bed is inspected for any bleeding points which are caught and ligated. These are usually in the edges of the mesentery. When the edges of the mesentery are well formed, they may be sutured, but stitches should not be inserted in the liver substance because bleeding occurs from the stitch holes. Any persistent oozing from the bed can be controlled by small pack of hemostatic gauze. The final ass assessment before closure and the closure. The operative field, the operative field is inspected by, with particular reference to the ligatures on the arteries and the cystic duct. The wound is closed in layers as described with drains in the right subdiaphragmatic area and the left, left subhepatic position anterior to the lesser momentum. Thank you very much.